So I wanted to put together a group and I started talking to a few people about it and they agreed and we agreed that we didn't want to be like every other group uh, which was known to just move from church to church, from musical to musical. We really wanted to do something that had meaning and so as a social worker I've always wanted to make sure that I did something with my life, tell people that were in situations that were considered less fortunate. I am Pastor Tabitha C. Whitten. Um, it took me a long time to honestly be able to say that I am Tabitha. So many times I would get so uh, connected, uh, interwoven with what the Lord had committed to my hands to do that I forgot that I was an individual, not just uh, a part of what he had called me to do. And so I thank God today that I have a name. My name is Tabitha. I'm Tabitha with an A, T-A-B-A, -A, then with a C, Witten. Mm -hmm. Now you know me. I, I grew up in Fifth Ward, uh, Houston, Texas. Uh, my mother was a young, I like to tell the story that she was a young teen mother. That's important to me because it says that there are times that uh, your birth is not in the most, should I say, desired times or places. But God always has a plan. I say, uh, I'm not a product of uh, accident or my parents' foolishness, mm -hmm. but I'm here on purpose. And so I am excited uh, to have an opportunity to just talk a little bit about my life. I grew up in Fifth Ward. I have strong heritage. Uh, most of my people, my family still in the Houston area. Uh, my father is John Charles Whitten. Did I say my mother's name? I didn't say my mother's name. My mother is gone to glory, but my mother is Cynthia Whitten. And you know what? The older I get, the more I'm beginning to be the diva like my mother, Cynthia Whitten. Cynthia Glory Dean Whitten. Titus Whitten. <laughs> that's inside scoop. So if you don't know, don't worry. But if you know, yeah, that's Gloria's daughter. Yes. Uh-huh. Cynthia Whitten. Um, my mother and my father, John Charles Whitten, uh, my parents, who I thank God for allowing uh, me to have the pleasure of being uh, birthed through their, uh, their connection. And so I love y'all. I love you, Mama, in heaven. And Daddy, I love you. I thank you. My father still supports me today. Uh, not child support. No, not child support. It might be child support, but it's support. <laughs> He is a blessing to the ministry every month. My dad, my dad, and I guess to make sure that I don't uh, get it mixed up uh, on the little memo note, he says love gift. So I guess it's not child support. <laughs> it's memory support. Daddy don't kill me. <laughs> but anyway, so I grew up in Fifth Ward. I went to school in Fifth Ward. Um, my uh, elementary and junior high school years. And then I went to school in Third Ward. Okay, now, now. Third Ward and Fifth Ward. I'm hood all the way. Y'all don't want to talk to me, but I'm holy hood all the way. You cut me, you're going to get hood and holy. Somebody shout amen. Yeah, so I grew up in Fifth Ward, went to school in Third Ward. I graduated from Yakes, Jack Yakes High School. And I tell that only because, really, uh, because I was a part of that uh, phenomenal uh, Jack Yakes uh, high school basketball team. Yes, 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 the Lady Lions. Yes, you know, number 14. Yeah, that's, that is you. Yeah, that's me. Well, anyway, so I went to high school at, in Jack Yates. Uh, went from Jack Yates, I uh, uh, went to uh, school at Texas College. I received a Bachelor of Science in Social Work from Texas College. And from there, uh, started practicing in Houston. Um, now, it's not all just like that, because you do know I had an incidence with the police, but we ain't going to talk about that part. But I can say this. They didn't keep me. They had to let me go. Ah, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. But I'm just saying. So, yes, because I know a lot of times many people, many people only know, you know, that that I was arrested or that I went to jail. And yes, I did. And I'm not proud of that, but I'm not ashamed of that. I don't know how that makes sense. But I do know that if it had not been for that then this would not be a reality. So I thank you, Jesus, not now on the devil, or on what the devil meant for bad. God used it to get me to my best. Mm, not just my good, my best. Ah, I got you. So let's go. So I, my aunt said at age of five, I said, I wanna, I'm gonna have a group, a singing group. Really interesting, because it's not like I came from a family of artists. Now, they can all sing. They can cook, sing, and serve. Don't, yeah, and they can fight, too. 
But what I'm saying is, it's not like I came from this surrounding where there was all this music and all of this, 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 this type of uh, ministry or energy uh, feeding or fueling that. And that's how I know that it's God that plans and, and puts purpose in our hearts. And my aunt said, when I was five years old, I said, I'm going to have me a group. And wow. It's true. I don't know. I can't remember having visions and walking through the house when I was a little girl, seeing myself uh, before audiences. And I've always believed that that was going to be singing. I've later come to understand that it's not just about the song, but it's about the ministry. It's about the message uh, that the Lord has re released in my life. But I've known that from a little girl. So a lot of times what people see in your life now, they think that, oh, what is she doing now? She's just living out what she's always known. And so that's why we, we sometimes you have to just, you know, not give any attention to, to your naysayers or to the people that's looking on because they don't know that you've been living with this stuff all your life. And so I just want to take a brief moment to just say to you, whatever it is that's in you, go ahead and live. Live it out. Don't worry about your circumstances. Don't worry about your experiences. Just live out what God has put in you. And I'm telling you, your life is going to be the better because of it. It's the Talking about Talk about Christmas in the Hood, which was one of the first big initiatives for Salt of the Earth Music Ministry. It was, um, I knew, growing up in Fifth Ward, it's always been important to me to give something back to where I've come from. Uh, the passage of scripture that the Lord used for me for my own personal ministry uh, is found over in Mark 5 where he met the man that was out in the graveyard and he restored him and the man was so grateful to God that he just wanted to hang out with Jesus. He wanted to just sit there at Jesus' feet and just get the word and just go on with Jesus. Now I've always come up with my own speculations why he wanted to stay on that boat with Jesus but my point is he just wanted to I mean this new life that the Lord had given he was so appreciative that he just wanted to be right where Jesus was. And Jesus says something to him that I believe the Lord said to me. He says, no, go back to your own kind and tell of what great things uh, the Lord has done for you. And so that that is literally uh, what I believe the mission and the mandate of my life is to go back and tell those uh, tell those pe persons, not just from Fifth Ward, but there are people that identify with issues and situations that my life uh, has, have lived through, that I have a responsibility to go back and just proclaim, declare the good news of Jesus Christ. Listen, we got Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. I'm trying to tell you, you can't miss it. We got food. Somebody shout wow. Listen, it's all good. It's all free. It's all here for you. All you got to do is come here and get it. God bless you. I'm here. You know how we do it. We came to the hood to do some good. And so Christmas in the Hood became the first initiative where I, on purpose, went back to Fifth Ward to do something to be a blessing to the families that were out in that area. So we would go out and we do toys and turkeys and cash, you know, you got and food, you know, all of that, whatever it took to get them out. And really those were just the trinkets to get them to really the uh, place where we could minister Jesus Christ to their spirits. And so listen, I think the first one was in about 1995, 96, and it's been every year since, and it's grown bigger and bigger and bigger. We have now uh, partners, community partners, and uh, ministries and individuals that help us to give back to the community. And we know, we on purpose, we, we plan. We don't just do toys, but we do new toys. I think that's important because sometimes when you are in uh, situations that are less fortunate or not as fortunate or uh, we're not a have, we may be a have not, mm -hmm, I think it's important to not always get the hand-me-downs or not always get what somebody else has already been through. And so what we want to do with Christmas in the Hood is give you your toy, your own toy. This is the toy. Nobody's played with this but you. You're the first person to have this toy. You're the first person to wear these clothes. And so that's very important to me. Uh, I know it may not mean anything to anyone else, but I think that that means something to children that possibly have never had that kind of experience. And guess what we get to do? We get to tell them that this is because of Jesus. Listen, you can't get good without God. And so Christmas in the Hood gives us an opportunity to do good to families that are dealing with all kinds of situations. Single parents, struggling parents, uh, some no, no parent homes. I mean, just all kinds of stuff out in the hood. So it becomes a time where 
everybody can come together. The, the families, because we do the turkeys for the parents. We have a time of in, in, gospel entertainment. It is just, it's one of my highlights. Mm -hmm. So Christmas in the hood, it's the place where we go back to the hood. We go to the hood, we come, we're bringing Jesus. Yes, we are. Turkeys, toys, cash, and all of that. And it's just that good thing that I, I, say, I say, not just sharing toys, but we say sharing Christ at Christmas. So that's what Christmas in the hood is really all about. It's about us going back, uh, giving uh, the blessing of Jesus at Christmas. If the Lord is to you, you ought to praise If you're living and breathing right now, Cuts and curls. Uh, and I left my job, my secular job in 2004. And so I was really praying because I knew that I had ample opportunity now to do all kinds of things. And so I was like, Lord, what can we do? And so um, because I worked in the school district, I contracted services with about 12 schools out in Aldine School District. I knew that at the beginning of school, the families a lot, a lot of times that I serviced had needs uh, beginning at the beginning of school. Uh, but again, because of most of my exploits and most of my emphasis has always been out in the hood, not the hood. Some people get offended when I say the hood, but I don't mean that in a negative way. I just mean Fifth Ward. And we just uh, many times refer to certain areas as the hood. Ain't nothing bad about the hood. Hmm. Jesus came from the hood. They, when they say, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Nazareth was a hood. Okay. Anyway, so I was like, what can I do? And so because I was so up close and personal with the school district, I knew that at the beginning of school, uh, families were hurting and could use some support. Cuts and curls. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and all of the families in the area that need support with getting their kids ready for school as it relates to their hair. Uh, and initially, that's what it was. I'm going to pick them up and we're going to get their hair done. So uh, we had one barber, Duranda Williams, Duranda Williams. I call her name over and over and over again, who's always worked with us from the day one. She was the first barber that cut about, mm, I think about 12 kids the first year, 12 little boys, and then members of Sauté, uh, Nikki and Michelle Dupree. Y'all don't think I can remember all this stuff. My mind is good. Uh -huh. You got to get your mind stayed on Jesus so your mind can keep these memories. But we we did about, I think about, uh, about 30 girls that first year. And um, I picked them up. We pack, we transported them to a salon, and uh, we got their hair done. We make sure that we got the uh, the um, chemicals and uh, supplies, all the supplies necessary to make sure that they could look good going back to school. Because I think again, when we're living in certain areas with certain situations, sometimes you would be uh, surprised to know that what you look like affects how you act and how you behave and how you feel about yourself. And so we like to try and with Southern Earth with this uh, initiative in terms of cuts and curls, that back to school initiative, we want to try and help you start off on a good foot, on a, on a high, on the right note. You look good, you feel good, and guess what? You learn good. And when you learn good, guess what? You're in a better position to do good for the community in which you've come from. So that's what Cuts and Curls is all about. And it has grown, my God. Now it's been 11 years. Um, is it 11 years? What is this? 04? 04? What is this? 15? Yeah, it's 11 years. I've been off my job that long? Well, anyway. So it's been 11 years and it has grown. Oh my God, it is incredible. We do about 60 kids every year now. We transport them. We're in um, partnership again with stylists, licensed cosmetologists, barbers, uh, community partners like Flow Media and uh, uh, Restorative uh, out Outreach. Uh, uh, Lord make me over. Uh, N Nicole uh, uh, Bruce, she's going to die. Nicole Hill. I'm sorry, John. Nicole Hill. N N John Hill's wife. Nicole Hill. <laughs> Out there in Onboard Hair Designs. And my friend, Shalati Ellison, for many years, have uh, they were along the, the line, the first stylist that agreed to help us get our babies back for school. And that's a big thing because these stylists, they on the weekend that, you know, right before school starts, we know that they're busy. But the Sunday, the day before, they come, they volunteer their time from what from whatever time it takes to get the job done. They volunteer their time to get these kids' hair done. And they do it with smiles and they do it in style. And I just I, I, I bless God for how he's allowed me to come in contact with such great 
kingdom people. And so, you know, that's what we've been doing, cuts and curls, for the last Lord knows how many years. You have done for the better. We started going to the prison. We were, again, we knew that we wanted to uh, not just be the traditional go from church to church, musical to musical group. And uh, we went to the prison. I don't know, Minister DJ had been going in with uh, some individuals. You know, Minister DJ, you know, y'all know Minister DJ. Minister DJ, I believe Minister DJ was born saved. <laughs> I believe she came here saying yes to Jesus. <laughs> so she was already serious in God and doing prison stuff. And so she uh, mentioned it to us. And, you know, it was something a little different. And so, you know, we were excited. So we got all dressed up. You know, y'all know, we, you know, we dressed alike. I would, you know, but damn, we got it in there. We go in there and it is hot in the prison. You hear me? Uh, they don't have no AC in the prison. So we're in here with these pantyhose, these stockings, these heels, these drop dead gorgeous church suits in the prison. <laughs> but we loved it. We loved it because there was such a freedom there. There was such a hunger. There's something about being in a still place where God can really say something to your spirit that man, it was like, oh, this is it. And we almost vowed that we weren't going to never go into church no more. We were just going to go to prison. <laughs> so we uh, we became prison celebrities. Nah, nah, on the devil. How, how you like me now? We go into prisons. You walk in. Hey, that's so tight. Yeah, yeah. Can we get your autograph? Well, you know they can't really start asking for no autograph. Now, but it was just like that in the prison for us. And that's great. Listen, we you may never know our names out on these major platforms. But for the person that had no hope behind a prison cell, they know who Sote is. And I, listen, that is to me the testament of a great ministry. Not how many people know your name in lights, but how many people know your name in the dark. Oh my God. And God has allowed us to go in dark places and be light and not get lifted up and be proud, uh, not to have to worry about what you wore, about, you know, you know, you have to, not your clothes. None of those things matter. They, you know, it was only about I need something for my spirit. I need I need a word from the Lord. And thank you all for remembering us. God allowed us to do that. And from, I'm going to say, we've been doing prison ministry for 95, probably not long after we started, to now. And we still today are involved in prison ministry. And when we got together, one of the things, when we got back together, well, they said, what you mean back together? When we agreed to come together for this reunion, uh, one of the things that I said we must do is we must go and we got to do something in prison, y'all, because that's really, you talk about Saudi Earth, that's really who we are. It's on the street. It's with the t-shirts. Uh, it's, it's, it's under the bridges. It's, it's not all dressed up and glammed up, but it's, it's a people as with Jesus, that, that last supper, uh, taking off his robe and putting on his apron. That's who Saudi Earth is. That's who Sote is. And I thank God that he's allowed us to uh, deal with a little bit of limousines and, you know, being uh, 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 experiencing some great uh, ministries and wonderful platforms. Yes, we've played on some radios. And yes, some people may even know us uh, internationally. But none of that matters at the end of the day. What matters is, was God pleased with the service that we released? And can we say that we did it to the glory of God? And I can say, as my grandmother would say, you know, if he came and got me today, it is well with my soul. And I thank God that he allowed me long enough to live, to live through my mess, to get to his miracle, and then to be a part of the making uh, for somebody else's life. What else can you ask for in life? That's God. That's Sote. I love you. I pray you've been enlightened on who we really are. God bless you.